Hello and uh, welcome to this short screencast explaining uh, the org parser issue number four, def and questions. Your three questions here are all interrelated. That's uh, why I thought I'll quickly make a demonstration. They are all uh, related to tooling. Your first question is, how do you compare line test outputs? Those are super long strings. How in the world are you going to compare them? Your second question is, well, I know this is what I should have, but how the fuck create, can I create it quickly so that I can write a proper test? And your third question is, well, line test is super slow. It takes five and a half seconds. How should I run that? It's not funny. Well, they're all related to tooling. Uh, first things first, Closure is a Lisp. With a Lisp, you can connect your REPL to the live application, and then you never ever have to restart the REPL. Line test is just a small wrapper that starts the REPL, then runs the tests and then stops. So whenever you have to restart it, the whole application boots up again. This is not a very common way to program in Lisp. For example, one of the benefits in Emacs is that Emacs already is a Lisp uh, REPL. So I can write arbitrary Lisp expressions in here. For example, if I evaluate one, this evaluates to 1 down here. If I evaluate plus 12 and 2, it evaluates to 14. I can write arbitrary code, and this arbitrary code immediately is evaluated. This uh, looks very similar to, say, a JavaScript console. However, it is not, because the whole application runs. I can introspect the whole application state, and I can change it. And the same is true not only for Emacs Lisp, which is unrelated to your question, but also for any Lisp, also for Clojure. So in Clojure, what uh, you usually do as a Lisp programmer is you start your REPL once, connect your editor to the REPL, and then just start coding. You never have to restart it. I already did that once. I said cider jack in Clojure, which creates a REPL. Uh, I could also have started a line REPL here and then said CIDR connect. CIDR is my uh, is the Emacs package that connects Emacs to a closure REPL. So I have it running. So inside here, if I evaluate one, again, it's one, but now it's closure. You can also see that the output is slightly different, but I can, all the things that are standard list I can do in here as well. But now to the fun part. I can also evaluate the whole namespace here. Let me do that. That works. If I made any kind of uh, typo, uh, then uh, let me make a proper typo. I will get uh, an exception. For example, here it would say, I do not know uh, uh, the symbol parse. Huh? It doesn't know parse. It shows me where the problem happens and it immediately jumps to this position. Okay, so let's fix it and reevaluate the namespace. So you can just write out code and do stuff. Let's do something easy. Let's make an add function that takes two things and then returns it. So I would just write it, I would evaluate this form, this gives me add, and now I can say add like this. I would never ever restart my REPL. Now the whole application can use the function add, but let's not do that. Let's see how you can work with tests. So let's uh, call all the, let's run all the tests in this namespace. I can do that. It runs them. And it says, 55 assertions, 18 tests. I can also say run all the tests in the whole project, not just this namespace. And it runs them and it immediately gives me an answer. Now what happens if uh, a test is read? Let's uh, just go to the same line where you had a pr uh, not a problem, but where you uh, said there is a test that has a problem or is still read. Let's say we are passing 13 o'clock, but we have the expectation that it should be 12 o'clock. Obviously, this should be a failing test. So let's run all the tests in the whole project. And we'll say there is two namespaces that have been run. 
111 uh, uh, assertions and tool failures. It says this is my expectation, this is what actually came out and this is the diff so I don't have to do a manual diff. I can very easily see what the problem is. 12 and 13 o'clock. Oh. Very nice. It also highlights in the code where the problem is. It's test number uh, in, in line 260 and something. Same happens if I go and add more mistakes or not mistakes, just failing tests. Let's run them. I just run the tests in the namespace now. Then all get read and I can immediately see what the problem is. 18, 19, 12 and 13. Very, very easy. So let's fix them. Uh, here I can of course just make undo, rerun the tests, everything is green again. Okay, so this is your first question. How do you compare it? You let the editor do the hard work. Second is, okay, so I want to write a test and it should expect all this shit. So should I type this by hand or can I uh, just create it? Well, of course, you can uh, just capture the output of this. So let's do that. Let's go here and uh, just get the parse function from where you used it and then just evaluate it. Huh? I can now inspect cider inspect last result. I can see the last result or I can even say cider uh, print last print eval last sexp. Then I uh, get it like this and I can copy it. Huh? Now I have the result that I can use for anything that I want. Huh? I can say def foo is this. Huh? Now whenever I say foo it's actually this. That's your second question. You Again you let the editor and the REPL do the work. Don't do it by hand. And the third you have seen. How can I speed it up? Well don't restart your program. Just have one open REPL and use the tooling. Uh, so all the things that you have seen are not uh, closure specific. They are uh, proper and valid operations for all Lisps. So if you learn it once, uh, you can reuse it anytime. The REPL that I used or the REPL wrapper that I used is called CIDR. This is a plugin for uh, Emacs. Wow, this is a outdated page, huh? That's uh, CIDR is of course not very specific. Let's say CIDR closure. Yes, that's the one that I've been using. Huh? That's the most popular closure uh, interactive development environment. Uh, yes. If you're using Vim, there is a Vim Fireplace by Tim Pope. That's the most popular one for Vim. Huh? I used to use that as well when I started with uh, Closure, but then very quickly I understood uh, the benefits of using Emacs, and that was actually the, the reason why I switched because I finally understood Lisp. But uh, Fireplace is very, very popular, lots of people like and use it, and Tim Pope is doing great work, and there's still uh, stuff being built. So you can definitely also use that instead of uh, the Emacs closure wrapper, just use Fireplace, just check a uh, tutorial on Vim Fireplace and use that. Okay, good luck and enjoy.